Hey guys, welcome back to The Modern Day Artist, the show where I pretty much go unscripted and just speak to people who I think are, you know, talented, creative, who are pursuing something for themselves artistically. Even this intro is completely freestyle, it's just how I roll. In today's episode, we spoke to Max. Max Myers, a videographer, photographer, absolute legend in the game. It was a great conversation me and him had. We spoke about things from how he started. Uh, how he transitioned from photography into video, how he got started with car photography. He dropped a lot of good gems as to how to do that better, you know, what kind of things you need. If you're a filmmaker, if you're a photographer, and you're in that field, in that creative field, this episode is gonna be really, really interesting. This guy's worked with some pretty notable individuals. Without any further ado, please just, you know what? I'm not, I'm not even gonna waste your time, man. Check out the video. Did I do a good job introducing this episode? I don't know. Fuck it. Max. You're finally here. Finally. It's about time. How you been, bro? Good, bro. I'm excited to be here. This is going to be good. Been following your journey with this stuff for a while. Yeah, bro. Thank you, bro. It's been good. So. But today is all about you. And yeah. uh, so, just to preface, actually, how about this? Introduce yourself. Who, who, who are you? What do you do? All right. My name is Max Myers. Um, I just turned 20 about a month ago. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a lot of things. I'm a videographer creative cinematographer creative director i make i edit i produce videos and it's all me i'm kind of like a one-man team um and i i just try and be really creative with what i do um i try and make things look like like it's legit like out of a movie or commercial mm -hmm. you know um on a much smaller budget and i think i do a pretty good job at it no bro you're you're actually he's one of the sickest i've like ever seen ever since i started my journey like I've like you've always been in the background like I don't know I mean, people don't like know I guess our dynamic but yeah. I'm, so growing up uh, I went through high school went to the same high school in Montclair High and before I even like picked up a camera or decided that I want to do anything creative this kid was already filming like the soccer games he had his big telephoto lens and he was making the edits and he was like you're good bro <laughs> and he was just like I don't know he was just always on the grind and and Eventually, when I when I did start taking it more seriously, he was so far ahead. He was the person that I reached out when I needed like help for invoices, contracts, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. He was yeah. like, "Bro, you're like you're an inspiration to me and, and a lot of I other people." It, so, yeah. but let's get into how'd you start? You know what I'm saying? How long yeah. you been doing it? How did you, how'd you get started with this whole thing? So let's think. Um, all right. So the way I got started, um, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of guys can relate. Sometimes like they'll get. Like, you know, a little toy drone for uh, Christmas, you know, drone. right? So they'll have, it's fun. You fly it around a bit. So I was doing that. I've, I found a lot of fun. So I would upgrade it all right, and upgrade it and upgrade it. As you upgrade it, everything gets better, including the camera. So for me, it started off as like, like the drone's cool. It's fun to like fly it around and stuff. So like the first thing you got that was related to filmmaking was a drone? Yeah. With a camera. So I didn't, yeah. How old so I didn't have like a camera. I just had a drone. The nicest camera I had was on this drone. Uh, so think about it like that. I have a nice camera with the ability to fly it, you know, a mile away and start taking photos. Oh, from like so you are. So air. you were like trying stuff. So you know, like at first it was just cool and fun to like look at it as I'm flying around, you know. But then I'm like starting to take pictures and videos, and then like I'm like, all right, how can I like make this smoother and like more cinematic, you know? So then that's really where it started to shift from like fun to like actually creating stuff with it. Yeah. And since I'm like, think about it, I'm like. In the air, I get these crazy angles that, like, a photographer on the ground can never get. So, like, I'm having fun with it. I'm getting crazy creative, getting all those angles. And I think that's really what, like, sparked my, like, creativity rather than just, like, I'm always trying to get, like, cool different angles, you mm -hmm. know. And that's that's probably, like, a big part and, like, the foundation of, like, my mindset for photography. How, how old do you when you got that drone? So, probably, like, probably like beginning of like seventh grade i'd okay. say i got like the first one and then like i kept upgrading it so probably by eighth grade i really got the one where i started to do um where i started to like use it to take pictures and film and stuff so yeah damn bro that's and really when, where when did you get your first camera following that so yeah so like obviously like i'm like this is a lot of fun this is cool now i need like so i all right well, I did, I did a short film. I entered it in the Montclair Film Festival, okay. and I won a like, Young Filmmakers Award or something. Yeah? So that was pretty cool. That was probably like my was first the accolade. Um, it was just a compilation of drone shots. It was like 
set to um i think his name is, is some philosopher alan watts mm. like inspirational things gotcha. so it was just fun little short film but it was like only drone shots i'm like looking at it like like it's it's fun but like with a camera like it would be a lot better so then i was like all right i need a camera so i got a camera i started off with like the lumix g7 i believe okay oh. so a nice little beginner camera um and then yeah so then i had i had to kind of relearn a lot about how that the camera worked like an actual physical camera as opposed to the drone and how did you do that you know so i've never taken like any classes any like anything like that i really didn't even have like a like a mentor like there was no one i was like reaching out to and like asking how to do stuff Mm -hmm. so i just used youtube i just used my resources youtube is huge youtube YouTube, like you can learn everything you do on youtube but with that like go go watch a video or something but then go out and do it like trial and error is the other biggest thing like you got to go out and actually put it into practice to really like like see a change and like develop your skills you know mm-hmm. so that was really big a lot of trial and error a lot of youtube um and just like just de- trying to develop my own look you know yeah bro yeah that's such a big thing i feel like once you start like once you get comfortable with the technical side of photography it then becomes how do i get like that look yeah that like for me it was like i want to have a look that people look at the photo and it's like oh it's a mic photo you know yeah, yeah i kinda. think you have that at this point I you see think your, so i see your stuff i see some of your photos like i'm just scrolling through like quick and like i know it's you like i don't see using it i know it's you oh, that, so i think i think you're i think you're getting there <laughs> yeah a no. lot of your recent stuff has been like really really solid you're, doing, you, you're doing some good stuff appreciate it bro of course so one of the first things that um i've seen you do in terms of photography was car photography yeah that's like your bread and butter would yeah. you say that i would say so yeah that's... So how'd you get started with that so i mean i've always been like a car guy like you know like a little kid playing the little car video games racing and stuff so i've always liked cars um and then i would go to uh car shows um okay. and bring my camera and just you know start taking pictures so you were like networking exactly Okay. Yeah, networking is huge, but that's that's where I like learned the value of networking. So like, I go to these car shows, I take pictures, and then like, maybe like one of the owners would see me snapping a few pictures, like, "Hey, you want to send me those?" And like, we connect over Instagram, and I'd send him a link. He's like, "Yo, these are sick. You want to go and do a shoot? I'll give you like a hundred bucks or whatever. Let's go do a shoot." And you know, like seventeen year old me was like, "Yeah, let's do it. This is great." Sixteen, seventeen. I don't even know how old it was when I started that. I guess somewhere, somewhere, somewhere around there. But yeah, like we just go out and like that networking, like that showed me the value of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that was my one passion. And then I had that other one that was kind of on the rise and just kind of combined them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've done a lot of really cool car stuff. What's like, do you have like a favorite car that you shot? Or like a special one for whatever reason? I did recently, I did a really cool one. It's called the Apollo. The Um, Apollo. And it's one of 10 in the world. Um, it's like four You're million some exclusive dollars. Stuff. Oh wow! So exclusive. So all right. So this guy he texts me. He goes, um, "Hey, come to this racetrack in uh, upstate New York. Be there at six a.m. Like in two days." I'm like, "Okay, cool." Because like this guy, like like he's got some money. So um, I go up and I know he's got this one car, the Apollo. It's like crazy race car. Like it's not even road legal. You can't drive it on the track. So imagine spending four million, or you can't drive it on the road. You can only drive it on the track. So imagine spending four million dollars on a car that you can't just go out and drive on the road, right? Damn, so like bro. this guy's got money. It's crazy. So basically, the Apollo, like I said, one of ten, like four million, five million dollars, crazy. So there's that, and then there's the same company, the Apollo. They made like a prototype race car. Mm. It's the only one in the world. He had both of them there at the <laughs> racetrack. So like he, them? he owns the one and then the prototype, the one of one, yeah. the company lent to him for the day to use for fun. Oh, that's so sick. So like bro. that's like insane. So I, I shot both of them. Of and like that's like the craziest shoe. I remember seeing that car, the Apollo, maybe two years ago at a car show. And you know, like that's like like there's like a hundred people surrounding it and I'm still like freaking out just like seeing it. But then to have like just me shooting and directing, not one but two of them. That must have been such a moment for you. Absolutely. How did, how did that make you feel? I just remember pulling up and like, like these cars like don't look real. Like it's a spaceship. It looks like a computer rendering, but like it's real life. So it's crazy. I remember pulling up and going into the garage and it's like looking at it like in real life. And it's just like, like insane. 
it looks like nothing you've ever seen. Damn. Bro. So cool. So how did you go from? I mean, obviously you started as a drone, right? Yeah. And then that you kind of Loki started filmmaking before photography, if anything, right? Like yeah, kind of. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I was gonna say. So like, I have it written down. Like, okay, what was the jump from photography to filmmaking? Yeah. But it's kind of the opposite. I would I I would say I more so did photos. I I always also I always did both kind of, but I yeah. was more into the photos. I wouldn't post videos really. Uh -huh. I would only post photos. So when did you take that leap towards? Okay, I want to start yeah. putting stuff out there that I filmed. Yeah. So I think aside from the drone festival thing, like more, yeah. Because you have a pretty decent following on social media with what yeah. you post. So like, yeah. When did you start? Posting? I'm trying to think. Like, what was the first video I kind of posted? Um. Hmm. I I don't I don't even remember actually. Like, what was the first video? What What about one of the but, first ones that you really were proud of? Probably just some of the car stuff I tried to put. I remember there were some, like when I started out, like I really wasn't happy with like the results of a lot of them. That was, that was one thing. Like video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what and like, like arguably they were good, but like for just mentally standards? for my own standards, like I hold myself to such high standards, even mm -hmm. stuff I do like today, like, I, like still it has to be still, like still I'm not like a hundred percent happy with it. Like I know I can do better, but that's good. You know? I feel like you need that. In yeah. Like yeah. It, the keep, it keeps pushing myself. That's good, bro. So, there's that. Um, what was the question again? It was like, well, I mean, I guess the first one was like the leap yeah. from filmmaking and stuff, but then yeah. it, my ass, like, okay. what the... Yeah, yeah let's get it. I got it, I got it. So, um, I was, I mean, like, I did photo and video. Yeah. But, like, the paying clients, they really only, they really only wanted video. So, I was only getting mm. paid to go do video stuff. So, for kinda, the most you kind of had to. So, I kind of had to make the shift. So, I kind of was yeah. doing it a lot. And just like kept grinding it and practicing it and you know getting new lenses and researching how to like like all like the specific settings that go into making videos or like like you gotta like you know like it's very yeah. specific very very particular yeah you'd be doing your rollers you would do you have yo <laughs> i don't know i don't know if you can pick that up on camera but we are in a studio and there are a bunch of artists all around so you might hear some beats yep. some unreleased stuff maybe if we get lucky but there anyway you go. Uh, so we got a little soundtrack to yeah, go with our uh, perfect, thing, but perfect. Yo, so I've seen videos of people hanging out at the back of cars doing yeah, roller stuff. Yeah. Do you have so, any like crazy stories from doing that? Yeah. Um. All right. One time I was filming a Lambo, all right, and my boy he's driving me, so I'm hanging out at the back of his car. Um. And like I like he, he doesn't like do photos or anything, so I just hit him up. I'm like, Yo, can you come like drive for me? And I'm just gonna hang out the back of your car. And he's like, Okay. Um, so he gets all excited and stuff because we got the Lambo. That's so sick. he just like guns it. He's going like 70, 80 miles an hour. Like we're like on like a like like not public road, like some like back road. There's nobody on it. Mm -hmm. So he just guns it and he's going. I'm hanging out. I don't have like a harness or anything. I'm like, holy shit, I'm about to fall out. So I'm like hanging on. I'm not even recording the car. Like the car is like, he dusted the car. The guy, the guy is probably like, what the fuck is he doing? Where'd he go? Um, can I curse on this, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right, cool. I didn't know if you minded. Um, but yeah, so we're just like long gone and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, yo, slow down. I'm not trying to die. So that was pretty funny. Um, and yeah, I've done that a bunch. Uh, like I've done it, uh, like on a racetrack, like at the bed of a pickup truck. So I'm kind of like hanging out. And like like no harness like Damn, I'm like bro. swaying back and forth like that on the track probably, too so we're like we're like moving. It probably gives you so, such a rush though like when you're oh doing God, that like yeah. a, and like I, you can like see the shot you know you're getting like that crazy yeah, shot. Okay. I because I don't mm. usually do like car stuff but like one time yeah. my, my boy drives a uh, rides a Harley bike. Oh and I yeah. Did, uh, he was just riding around like uh, down where he he's down by. Uh, Man, I don't even know the time. It don't it don't matter too much. But I, like I, my boy, I had my boy drive, and I was yeah. like hanging out the the top of the thing, trying to get the shots, and like yeah. he was whipping by. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it wasn't as, probably it wasn't a Lambo, and it wasn't as exciting. But for me, like I was shooting the pics. And Dude, the I, Harleys I felt, are fun. I've done a lot of I motorcycle like, stuff too. Yeah, you know that rush, bro. Yeah, that must be a good feeling. But yeah, and like the best shots where you get like the lowest to the ground. So I'm like, yeah, oh, okay, trying to like pro tip right here, as low as I can, like almost like scraping the scraping the like. Yeah, street as and you learn by. stuff like that, like yo, the lowest angle. Like, what are things that you have picked up that just people look for? Just trial and error, like just like through what I've seen. Um, are there any things you can like, tell people, like yo, if you're doing car photography, you want to start doing some rolling shots? What are what are things yeah. that, that can well, start? Well, first with? thing, if you're doing anything with a car, you need a polarizing filter. Cause I remember you told me about yeah, this that one day yeah. at, the, at the field. Yep, it cuts out the reflections, like 
it like it changes everything like search it if you doubt me at all search it up you will see you will understand changes everything if you're doing cars if you're doing if you're doing a lot of things but cars especially you need that so that's a good tip um and then just angles you gotta every car has a certain angle where it looks the best okay so there's not really like one particular angle that you can say is like go go like stand like directly in front of it like yeah. at this angle you know and you have to like walk the way the that is it? the car is designed and like the like the lines of it mm -hmm. like so i'll go and i'll just kind of like look at the car first i'll kind of like walk around it and just kind of like get a feel for like the lines of it and stuff and then i'll take the camera out and kind of like play around with like like tweak like little 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 things and like there's a bunch of angles where it's gonna look good from but you just gotta find those and that'll help the photo look a lot better gotcha. you know that's so, sick man yeah so um the other thing that i like to talk about is like how you start making money with it and yeah. like when you're first starting like like you said you're like oh like 17 year old me someone wants like 100 bucks pull up take photo yeah. like, that's sick but eventually you start realizing oh like there's value behind what i do and i can yeah. start making a bit more money so like how, what did that transition how did you learn to start like you know yeah. handling it more of like like a business yeah so i think um my first like paying job um i think i worked for uh the upper montclair like business association so that's just like uptown gotcha. um and they hired me to take uh like lifestyle shots like around town and I think they paid like 600 bucks or something, mm. you know? Um, and to me then, that was like huge. That almost covered the cost of my camera. So yeah. I was like, huge wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute. Like I bought this for fun to take photos, but I just paid it off. So now I'm like thinking like, okay, so now I'm gonna buy a lens that's $600. So my photos are gonna be better. More people will hire me and it just mm. keeps going. So people are gonna keep hiring me cause my stuff's gonna get better. And then I just reinvest and reinvest. So like, yeah, I make pretty good money from it, but a lot of it, I just it goes, it goes right, right back, back into in, it, right back in. But that shows that you have like up. a passion for like the creation yeah. and like the equipment and stuff. Yeah. And that's good, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. that's really that's really what it is. I feel like if if you're doing something creative and like you like you just appreciate doing it in general, mm -hmm. you start making money. It's just gonna like grow. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So pretty much. Uh, I also want to get at like what kind of things are you doing now? Like what's going on with you now? What, what are you, yeah. dude? Actually, matter of fact, let's t t tell me the story, bro. Because yeah. Connor's back there, <laughs> and he was showing people some some filmmaking stuff, helicopter boat. Yeah. T tell me that story. Bro, How did that? That, happen? that was fun. So me and Connor both have a really good connection. Connections are key, like we've said before, but we both have this really good connection. Kristen Serafino, celebrity hairstylist. She does like Ryan Reynolds hair, like a lot of like really good celebrities. Everything good? Cool. Tight. So she does. Do like, that again. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, you good. Celebrities, celebrities millionaires, buzzwords. All right. So <laughs> me and Connor, all right, we went and we shot this car show, but it was also it's a car show, yacht show, private jet show, helicopter show, just millionaire only, like invite only event, crazy, like four days, like they gave us a hotel and stuff um like we were just we were just chilling it was a lot of fun um and we the the, the way we got into that connections connections are key connections are so valuable especially in this industry um so we work with um Kristen Serafina Connor introduced me to her a few years ago um she's great she's a celebrity hairstylist she does like Ryan Reynolds hair and a bunch of other celebrities um so we've done a few cool projects with her and stuff um, and so she kind of, I forget exactly how, I'll just condense it, but essentially she got us to shoot the, the whole this, event. this whole event. Yeah. Um, and like, we're the main videographers and like, we're walking around, there's like so many like millionaires, like everywhere. Did you have like instruction that you had to follow and like, yeah, things? so we worked, uh, this was something that was new to me. Actually, we worked under, uh, kind of like, what, Connor, what was like Charlotte's title? What was what would you say Charlotte's title was for that? Um, she was like the, the creative coordinator. Yeah, so we cool. kind of had like a creative coordinator, but like she's like thinking of like social media mind. So she's not shooting anything, but she's directing us and telling us, okay. hey, go capture this. And That's then you're so going to cool. come back and make this video and we're going to post it. So that was actually a lot of fun for me to work under that kind of direction. Do you feel you like know? you had more freedom? Or was it more like... A little less freedom, which I oh, wouldn't okay. think I would enjoy because, like, everything I do 
is pretty much on my own and like I'm making all the decisions. But it's kind of nice to have a, like a little more direction and have someone who understood like what we needed to capture and like our abilities to do so. And like what we could come back okay. and create. And then so that just, was nice. Okay. So, um, yeah. So Connor, you said Connor was showing you some of like the helicopter stuff. So one of the sponsors of the event was this like private helicopter chauffeur company, basically. Um, and then another one was this, um, uh, these guys who have like, um, the, this like little speedster boat. Um, and it's, it's kind of, it's modeled after like an old, uh, classic Porsche. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. It's pretty slick. Yeah. It did look cool. Yeah. So they kind of, we were kind of all coordinated and be like, it would be so cool to get, um, some fun videos of it like up in the air. So the, let's throw one of us in the in the helicopter. Who said like how did how did that even come up? Like who brought it up? Who said I don't, that? I don't really even like I wasn't there for that, that conversation. I think they coordinated it and like one of them was walking by and they're like, "Yo, go to the helicopter." Like cause, of course cuz they're just a helicopter like chilling outside. <laughs> just go go in so there. So like, "Hey, go to the helicopter in like 30 minutes. So right, we're going to go up and record the boat." I'm like, "Okay, cool." Yo, that is so, so dope. So bro. I go out to the helicopter, the pilots are like chilling. They're chill. It's funny. And I'm like, I like get in, I'm like getting strapped up, but like, it's just like the seatbelt. So like I'm hanging out of this shit with just the seatbelt. So it was, it was kind of crazy. And I remember like before we lifted off, I was kind of like testing it. Like, like I was like strapping myself in. Making sure you weren't going to fall out. Yeah. And I'm like to the pilot, I'm like, like I'm, I'm fine. Right. Like this will hold me. He's like, like I wouldn't trust it, but you should be okay. So like, you know, (laughs) so like I I do anything the shot. I hang out of cars, I hang out of helicopters, you know? Anything for a shot, I'll take whatever risks I need to. Um, that's why, that's why you gotta hire off. him, bro. Yeah. So we go up in the helicopter, and I'm just like dangling out of this thing with the camera and stuff, and we're like doing like low passes over this boat, and he's like just speeding around and stuff. Yeah, and, like, bro. One of the coolest videos like It'd be I've sick ever if created. You could put that, that up on screen. Right. I think I'm gonna edit it so it's up on you screen. You could do that. You think yeah. you send me the footage? Of course. All right, yeah. let's just watch it for a second. There it is. There you go. So you see me in the helicopter. Yeah. We're flying around. You see the boat. He's doing. He's doing yeah. his thing. It's fun. You got four people in the boat. They're having a great time. It's fantastic. It's like it's like a. It looks like a legit like commercial you'd see for that boat. And that's in Connecticut in like a bay. There's a big ass ugly factory on the other side. So I make that video look like it's in like the Bahamas. You know. Okay. How do you how do you go about doing that? Like getting like is it the certain angles? Not trying to show certain things. Yeah. You make so, you make stuff look like movies, bro. That's what I go for. Yeah. So it's. Like it's the angles not showing certain things. Like you gotta think ahead. You have to. One of the things that I do in like my creative process, while I'm creating it, while I'm creating something, I kind of have an idea. Like like simultaneously while I'm filming it, like I'm kind of like thinking where and how I can use it in the final video edit. Okay. You know. Oh. Okay. So like mentally, I'm like, all right, like this will be good, or like, okay, I have to record this for a few seconds longer, and then I have to like switch angles, stuff like that. So like while okay. I'm you in like, the process, I'm very like, like on the go. Like like think I know I need later. this, and I know, and I get the shot, and like I know exactly how I'm gonna use it. Notable people that you've worked with. So obviously the big three. Yeah. And so that was Chef crazy. G, I remember when that shit Sleepy happened. Sleepy Holly, a book. Whoa, Chef G, Sleepy <laughs> Hollow, a boogie. Um, big three, really cool. Um, and I just remember like I'd post that, and like people at school would be like. Yo, you shot that? Like, that's sick. I'm like, yeah, like, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, bro, that was sick. Yeah. Because that was high school, right? Yeah, it was high school. So, like, right. like, I, like, I come back from that shoot and go to school the next day. Yeah, like, and I've was, seen that, that cool. like, from yeah. the outside to me. I'm not yeah. sure whatever else thinking, but for me, I was like, dude, like, this dude's doing it. Like, he's yeah. doing it. Like, I need to do something like that. Like, it, it, it gives me, like, Motivation, you know, totally, totally. Because like, I mean, I I didn't start till like what junior year, mm. so I was a little bit like, I got not late to it. There's no late, but like, no, exactly. You can never be too rel- late. Like, relative can, to no like, matter how old you are, you can start wherever. Yeah, do whatever. But to me, I was like, oh, he's so yeah. far ahead and stuff like that, and I admired that. It kind of helped me yeah. go. So like, that was really cool. But so, give me your top five pieces of advice for filmmakers who are just starting out. All right, top five pieces. Of or for filmmakers pieces. in general. Yeah, just in general. Okay, let's see. Top five. Um, don't be afraid to be creative. Don't uh, don't be afraid to take risks. That's two. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Just keep going, even if like, like a lot of the times you're not gonna be happy with how something turns out. Don't let that discourage you. Keep going. Trial and error. You know. Um. 
networking is key that will get you shoots and that'll make you money and that'll buy you better cameras and stuff and lastly um gear matters but it also doesn't lighting is probably your best friend lighting is underrated to people who don't understand um you know videos and videography and photography like you can have like a really cheap camera and if you know how to use lights you can make it look like a really expensive camera that's really all you need so yeah all right but is there any time where you've made a mistake and you had to learn from it and what was that time yeah i mean i've made a bunch of mistakes like stuff from like forgetting things on shoots like you get all the way to shoot you forgot your sd card you know like you can't physically take pictures without the sd card you're kind of screwed so you kind of have to it's important to own up to it and be like hey i made a mistake and I mean, like that's sometimes scary to do, but like people understand stuff happens. So you, and you just gotta like respond and you gotta fix it. If you have to reschedule it, reschedule it as soon as you can. Or if you have to run back, spend 15 minutes, go back to the crib and grab it. Like stuff like that, you know, it's just how you, how you respond to those st- mistakes that are, that are really important. Mm-hmm. Were there any resources that were very good for you in terms of learning photography? Yeah, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube is great. And like I've said, YouTube and then trial and error, um, like just going out and shooting. But um, you can learn anything on YouTube. Um, just go out after and just kind of like put into practice and like you'll develop your skills. Yeah, that's, I like how you mentioned that. That's I how like I did. Yeah. People, people watch a lot of YouTube videos and like they don't do the practicing part. Mm-hmm. And that, that practicing part is literally how you like learn. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a big fact. Because like and everything's going to be different like once you actually have your camera and like in like your own situation like That's you true, have yeah. to adapt it in your own way you can't just go off of something someone else told you on a video you know okay so you have to learn what is the best way to network the best way to network as a videographer filmmaker don't do it with the intention of networking make friends and then the connection will be you know like pure and good mm-hmm. and you know it'll just be a good connection and then they'll kind of throw you a bone and don't be afraid to do stuff for free um i mean i don't do that much i don't really do stuff for free at all anymore except for friends friends and family free that's a good thing because you'll make those connections even more strong and then their friends and family that network their connections Mm -hmm. they'll see what you're doing for them and then you can kind of get the ball rolling with that that's how you can get a lot of good clients awesome and the question so this is a question left behind yeah by mikey darwish dj okay ready yeah what is your favorite song to listen to in the shower Ooh, that's a good one that's fun um breathe deeper by tame impala but the little yachty remix that is That's that tough. is great. I only heard it like for the first time a few months ago. I was like, whoa. So that's that's been my favorite song recently. I, I like bet. that a lot. And what is your question for the future guest? Question for the future guest. Let's think of a good one. And the future guest is at six PM. Oh yeah, so, so he's answering today. He's, he's answering today, back. yeah. Later. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, back to back is crazy. Yeah. Let's see, what would be good? Um Hmm. What is what who what does he do? He's Maybe a he's a musician stuff. rapper. He's a musician rapper. Okay. Um Where do you see yourself in five years? I think that's a really good question. I like asking people that a lot and I like thinking about it for myself, so I think that's a good question. Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> um you know, I don't know. There's a lot of different paths that I hope will work out. Potential paths. You want me to like talk about them? Yeah, I'm talking to your mic. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. I'd be forgetting, too. <laughs> um, so, I think there's a lot of potential paths. There's a lot of places I see myself in five years. Um, I don't have one that I necessarily, like, really, really want over the others. But um, I, I really want to be, like, I want, like, the job title kind of, like, creative director. Maybe of, like, a brand or, like, like I, I don't really know specifically. Like, something that would be cool, like, you know the clothing brand, like, Kith? Yeah. Like, creative director of Kith, like, for, like, all the visual stuff. Something like that okay. would be Ooh. really cool. Be That's sick. an option. I really want to work in Formula One, which is racing, because um, I follow that pretty closely, and I've got some connections that may be able to 
help me get into that and that'd be cool because then i'd just travel around the world for free you know that'd be that'd be really fun um and yeah yeah awesome, just something bro. like that maybe even start my own venture uh some production media company mm. i would Marketing. encourage that i don't know do your thing i bro. don't know who knows we'll see but i got some time uh i'm in college still so i've got two more years after this one is over and then i'll kind of see see where i am so, awesome yeah. bro well thank you so much for coming on to the show bro of course it's a pleasure Happy to talk to you, to you. And uh, yeah, dab me up, bro. We did it. Give me back. <laughs> Let's fucking go. We concluded that. Let's go. Yes, sir. Easy. Ooh. That was fun. That was sick.